Well, hello there. It's good to see you again, and welcome back to Lessons by the Lake, the Oswego Private Wealth Show. I'm your host and moderator, Ryan Ruff. It's great to be back with everyone today. And as always, I'm joined by my right-hand man, Mr. Bob Bedritus, the Managing Director over at Oswego Private Wealth. And on today's show, we've got a really special guest that's going to be joining us. It's Mr. Barry Garapedian. Barry is the President and CEO of MAG7 Consulting. We're going to get into Barry's world at MAG7 Consulting, uh, you know, and a lot more beyond that. Today's episode entitled Living an Amazing Life of Significance and Making a Difference in the World. We're going to be diving into Bob and Barry's relationship together and why it's so important to live that amazing life of significance. And that's a phrase for any of our regular listeners. You know, we've we've mentioned that on the show. And Bob Adraitis, he and his team, for those that are newer to the show, you know, look, uh, they are known for helping business owners become financially independent of their business because Bob and his team, at the end of the day, they believe a business owner deserves to maximize the value of their life's work. So there's a lot of crossover between the work that Barry and his team are doing at Mag7 Consulting, as well as how Bob is working with his clients over at Oswego Private Wealth. And boy, do we have a good conversation on tap for you folks today. So first, before we get into the uh, nitty gritty of everything, let's go ahead and say hi to the man of the hour. Bob, it is good to see you today. How you doing? I'm doing well, Ryan. It's so good to see you. I hope you're doing well as well. Oh, of course, of course. Always a good time when we get together. Uh, and hey, we've got a really special guest joining us today. Uh, you know, I, we've had this date circled on the calendar for a bit because we're excited to have Barry on. Why don't you open the conversation up before we bring Bar Barry out here and get into everything. Tell me about Barry, how it is that he came into your professional world and, and really why you wanted to have him on the show today in the first place. Oh, uh, well, fantastic. I, I can't wait to start this conversation with Barry. So, so Barry and I have uh, had a relationship for a little while. We were a part of a mastermind group, uh, CEG Worldwide, which is a, a, a handful of elite wealth managers around the country that, uh, that help their clients live an amazing life of significance, which is what we say we want, we do here. We want our clients to live an amazing life of significance to make a difference in the world, take care of the people they love, the causes they care about, and really understand uh, the two most important days of their life, the day they were born and the day they figure out why they were born, right? <laughs> and so Barry has been a, a mentor to me. He's been a, a real aspirational guy in my life. And Barry's just really a fascinating guy, as I'm sure our audience is gonna learn very shortly here. Uh, Barry spent 39 years with one for Morgan Stanley. Uh, built a successful wealth management practice in Southern California. And a little under, about two years ago, Barry decided to make a pivot in what he felt was important to him and the life of significance that he wants to lead. And he created, he sold his practice uh, and then he created a MAG7 Consulting. And I'll let Barry go into kind of why he did that and what it's all about. And um, I just can't wait to start this conversation. So. Uh, Barry, what, let me introduce you, and Barry, please uh, say hello to everybody. Bob, it's a pleasure to be here. Ryan, thank you for the lovely comments. And really what we want to do is see if we can actually impact the audience on really doing something they have never done before. So we're going to talk a lot about what's really working right now. There's so much information out there on Google and ChatGBT, but how do you actually execute something? And we're going to talk about a handful of things today depending on what direction you want to take on this, Bob. Oh, well, fantastic. I can't wait. Uh, Barry, let's just start out. Uh, tell us tell us your background. Tell us who, you, who are you as a carbon-based life form? <laughs> well, first of all, I'm 65 years young. Um, like you said earlier, 39 years on Wall Street, one firm, sold a billion-dollar business, got a little bored, and I said, you know, what do I really want to do? And my daughter made me aware of this. She said, you know, dad, you're spending a lot of your time talking to your client's kids. Why don't you formulate a practice around young minds? So what I've done is I've put together all the things I've learned in 40 years into what's called MAG-7. MAG-7 stands for the Magnificent Seven, the seven lessons you never learn in school. So my audience is 14 to 27-year-olds kids that want to get into their college of their dreams, college kids that want to get their first great job, and then post-college kids in the first five years of their career that want to climb the ladder fast. And I'm talking about giving them the keys to the fast button. That's my audience. So I'm working with affluent families with their 
young minds and everyone's different. There's no one person that's aligned. We put together a formal discovery, just like we you would do in your practice right now. And Bob, you're phenomenal at discovery and the details of your clientele. That's one of the things that we've talked about that differentiates you. I'm doing the same thing as a formal discovery with the young mind. I formulate deliverables of the seven things we're going to focus on. And then we have a digital dashboard. There's an accounting report card they have to do on Google Sheets of all the tasks I'm asking that they need to do. So there's a lot of accountability. You can't hide. And the results are ridiculous. The results well, are ridiculous. Uh, Barry, I love this. You know, Bob and I, we've had a lot of conversations on this show about uh, you know, the, the age old adage, the shirt sleeves, the shirt sleeves in three generations. And, and you can see so many times where affluent families over the course of history, there, that wealth that was built up by the first generation is gone by that third generation. And that's, you know, in large part, I would think due to, uh, you know, the growth and that, uh, fostering of, uh, of, you know, financial integrity and the financial literacy going along with that process and, and trying to get some buy-in really from the younger generations coming up because, uh, you know, sure, maybe life is a little easier when you have that wealth, but look at the same time, you got to learn to appreciate it. You got to grow into it and you got to understand why it is so important. So when I hear you talk about the process of, of educating and working with youth, this is exactly addressing, you know, so many challenges that Bob and I have talked about in prior episodes on this show. You mentioned that report card. I'm just curious, could you throw a few of the things that you do sure. hold people accountable to? What, what does that look like? Well, first of all, we would custom design the silos that are weaknesses for the young mind. So for instance, it might be just getting up at a certain time. What time are you getting up in the morning? Are you making your bed? Whole thing on, you know, Admiral. Um, there's, there's so much studies about accomplishments and winning the morning, win the day. So I would say one of the things that, that's on every report card is one thing called practice going first. Many of these young minds have a depreciating thought process about themselves, a very low self-image. They could be introverts, they could be extroverts, or an ambivert, which is in the middle. What I would focus on with many of these folks is I want you to be the first to initiate a handshake. I want you to be the first to say good morning. I want you to be the first person in an elevator to ask everybody on the elevator, what floor are you? Are you four? You're pressing the buttons. I want you to be the first person to run over and pick up that piece of trash in the gutter. I want you to demonstrate, demonstrate leadership. And through leadership, we're going to build confidence. We would measure five to 10 of those a day. So I might say to you, Ryan, Ryan, you've got to demonstrate five practice going first in a day. Your goal is 25 in a week. And they have to write the number down in a, on a Google Sheets. And it's, it's totally, I, I can see it every day. That would be an example of one. Another could be exercise and mindfulness. Another could be drinking enough water. Another could be um, from the standpoint of um, hand notes, written hand notes with wax and a seal. So there's a whole process of the art of connecting with people. That would be a silo that we put a lot of energy and time because there's communication, then there's connecting. It's a big difference. So how do you connect with people? So we would break it down into bite-sized little pieces, measure it, repeatable. It takes about 60 to 90 days to make a habit, to actually have a habit. And we measure stuff like that. So we will start with easier ones first. So usually with the young minds, I usually like to start off with, let's just make your bed in the morning. Many of these folks have nannies and maids. Make your bed. It's, it's the first thing you can do that's really pretty easy to do. And I, I get comments from parents saying, my God, what did you tell my kid? I can't believe my kid's making his bed. Seriously. They just can't believe it. It's such a simple thing, but we build on it. So there's a lot of little things, but they these little things are huge. Well, I think that's amazing. I think that's great. Uh, I've often referred to life as a three-act play. Uh, the first act is your preparation, how you learn to deal with the world, how uh, how you view how you view life in general. That second act is where people become successful, where they make a lot of money, they start their families, they begin, uh, you know, they they begin their home, their lives, their so on and so forth. And the third act 
is where I generally get involved with business owners as they're thinking about their succession plan, what are they going to do for that retirement? And I think so many of your, your, your seven points fall into something that, you know, maybe we haven't learned, maybe I haven't learned uh, myself fully what I should be doing. And I just love putting that into, and I've often said, I've often said that, you know, in any good play you've ever watched, Barry, that, you know, the first act develops the characters, the second act brings in the conflict and all the struggles that we all go through. And that third act, I'd like to say, that's where the action is. And so I think you're creating an army of, of uh, future really successful people that are being built to, to really take their second act and their third act to levels that they never thought were possible. And the last point I'll make on that is I think the one thing that sets me apart from other financial advisors is that I truly understand, I profoundly understand that what we do is about so much more than money. Life is about so much more than money. And I think it's that the ability to, through deep discovery, to help clients create a bigger vision for what they for what they didn't even know was possible. And you're doing exactly the same thing in that first act. So I just applaud that and think that's fantastic. And Bob, you're a master of discovery. You're a master of the details. How important it is to know about the legacy? Let's, let's face it, the most important thing is health, wellness. Then it's family, it's legacy. Taking care of those kids, educating those kids. You are a master at that. And you've been doing it for many, many, many years. So. This is just a spin on what I love doing in the practice. And I absolutely can't wait to get up in the morning. We have a narrative called win the morning, win the day. So we formalize a structure for the young mind of you never hit the snooze button. Instant defeat if you hit that snooze button in the morning. What do you do in the morning? First thing in the morning, you have all your toiletries laid out in the bathroom. You have your outfit laid out. You take a two minute cold shower. Not everybody will do that but I'm suggesting try a cold shower in the morning. You do a cold shower in the morning, you have an afterglow for a half hour, 45 minutes after that. So we have a process to get going for the, a lot of these kids or, or young adults, or in this case, many adults are, are, are doing this kind of energy. And there's a whole sleeve I have on energy management because if you don't have the juice in the latter part of the day, how are you gonna have a kick-ass business? How are you gonna have a, a multi-million, billion dollar business like yours, Bob, if you don't have the energy at four or five, six o'clock at night, right? So it is a lot about energy management, not time management, energy management. You know, Barry, today's episode, obviously entitled Living That Amazing Life of Significance and, and Making a Difference in the World. I want to kind of sectionalize it in two different ways. Let's look at that living the amazing life of significance to your point about leveraging energy and starting, you know, winning the morning, winning the day, and then allowing that momentum to, you know, follow you through a very successful day, a successful week, month, year. How does that factor into living an amazing life of significance? Because to me, it almost sounds like it's the bedrock of it. So where, where in your eyes do you see okay, that kind so of there's, starting? In our, in our process, there's a structure called the five Fs, family, faith, friends, fitness, financial. These are the five pillars. You got to take care of your family. Mom, dad, sisters, you got to take care of them emotionally, monetarily, however you define it, you got to take care of family. Faith could be spiritual. It doesn't have to be religious, but faith is a big piece of the equation of having that self-belief. Friends, don't forget about your friends. Call friends. People are isolated. Obviously, we know through COVID, but have the intention of calling one friend a day. Fitness, obviously, physical as well as emotional, obviously emotional as well. And then financial, you have to be a great financial steward of your own money. And that's what Bob is so phenomenal at, is being that financial steward for these incredible families. So those five Fs is balancing them, hard to do. Because early in your career, you might be 80, 90% building a business. And you don't have time for all these. You have to find time for, to put energy into each of those silos. So that's really part of the whole process. And CEG did a great job with that over the decades that I work with them. And they, they advocate that theme of the five Fs. Barry, just to build on that just a little bit, uh, what's your, 
define your amazing life of significance. What is what is your why and what you do? What is your life of significance? You know, I would say I get an imminent amount of gratification and passion when I when I can help someone grow and, and be the best they can be. So from my perspective, I was a professional magician before I got into this business. I love doing magic tricks and seeing people's faces of, oh my God, how do you do that? I get that reaction when I can impact someone with a giant idea to make their business grow or help a young mind get up on stage and do a skit or have them do a fancy magic, a, a math equation on a whiteboard in a, in, a, in a math class, stuff like that. So I love the fact of seeing other people be successful from some of the things I'm giving them a choice to do. Not all of them are going to do it. This stuff is hard. <laughs> this is not easy. It's hard. If they choose to go in that direction and embrace discomfort. My goodness gracious, there is no ceiling. Because what we oftentimes do is we self-sabotage and we talk to ourselves, we can't do that, we can't do that. Why can't you have a, a multi-billion dollar business? Why can't you be a straight A student? Why can't you do this? I mean, obviously the mind gets involved and fear gets involved and we all know about fear. Everyone has it, how you manage it. How do you manage fear? We get into that big time. So a lot of little things that we you're not gonna learn in school, you're certainly not gonna learn in school. You're going to learn on the street. And this is basically EQ. We know the IQ is, is important, but we know that the people that went to school that got A's, B's, and C's oftentimes are running multi-billion dollar companies, <laughs> it's right? very true. And it doesn't mean if you're a valedictorian, you're going to be incredibly successful in the real world. Those folks that scratched and clawed that got A's, B's, and C's, they're kicking ass on the street. Mm -hmm. Yeah, very right? question yeah. for you, though. In the in the sense of of that life of significance, we dove into kind of what you believe. But what are some of the misconceptions in your eyes of what some people in today's world might view a life of significance as? You know, there's maybe some maybe it's wealth, maybe it's this, maybe it's that. But what do you believe some of the misconceptions are out there when somebody might think that they're living that awesome life, but is it really an amazing life of significance at the end of the day? Well, we have to define what makes you happy. So what makes you happy, Bob, might be completely different than what, what are your other clients makes ha them happy. So I think you need to really do a deep dive. And I've done what I call a gratitude list. I have 25 things I love to do. I look at them every six, I, I mean, I, I, I change it every six months. And the more specific, the better. It could be as simple as driving my car at sunset, playing the most, most favorite song. It could be going to the movies with popcorn and a Diet Coke. I'm serious. I have 25 things. And the thing about a gratitude list is you are very detailed with it. The more you look at it, and when you're doing one of those items, you realize, my God, I'm actually doing what I love to do. It doesn't get any better than this. I'm actually doing this. Wow. And you'll do those things more often. So I would do a deep dive on what makes you happy. And I've done that, actually, I've done that for 20 years, ever since I saw the movie, The Secret. They talk about the law of attraction, that you attract what you want. It be, oftentimes happens. I really do believe in that. So let's say a young, a young mind wants to have a boyfriend or a girlfriend. The first thing I would do with them is they're going to write out a list of 20 characteristics of that gentleman or young lady you want in that person and five non-negotiables five things you absolutely would not want in this person we're going to make a blueprint of what kind of person you want to share your life with and i'm telling you oftentimes 80 90 percent of it is that is the way that list looks it's never gonna be a hundred percent but a lot of it will be that way and also those non-negotiables the person might be a heavy drinker the might person might be a heavy drink um smoker or drugs or whatever. No way I'm dealing with that with that person. So I think clarity, having a blueprint, having a plan. And so life of significance is different for everybody. But if you made a 25 items of gratitude, of things that you're really, really excited about doing, and Bob, you can go through that right now. You, you have such a wonderfully balanced life and you are living what you're talking about doing. 
Bob is one of these guys, he practices what he preaches. So more importantly, as um, you can talk all you want if you're not doing it. Uh, well, that's exactly right. Uh, that's exactly right. Uh, you, you know, it's so interesting. First of all, uh, helping them identify what they're looking for and their non-negotiables in a, in a boyfriend, girlfriend, and uh, generally, and taking that into ultimately a marriage uh, relationship. Uh, you've just uh, upset all the divorce attorneys that might be, uh. <laughs> might be listening to this, but doing that. But I want to connect something that you said earlier. You talked about self-sabotage and self-image and then, and then the gratitude list. Do you, do you connect those in any way? Uh, do you see that, that uh, a life of gratitude, an attitude of gratitude and having that list affects how people, their self-image and their and then a less of a propensity to self-sabotage things they're doing? You know, it, it really comes down to either you have good habits or bad habits. At the end of the day, I'm advocating better habits. So in order to have a habit, it has to be a 60 to 90 day repetition of doing it. And so much of what I do is based on repetition. Your successes, Bob, is repetition of doing it over and over and over and over again. So it's the same thing with these young minds. They are weak in their self-image. They're, they're self-depreciating themselves. So how do you get someone more confident? We have to start with small steps, small baby steps. And so, because if you give them anything too big, they're going to, they're going to check out. If I gave them a digital dashboard of 10 things and they're all tough, they're going to check out. They're not going to do them. I got to start small, build, build confidence. Um, someone who might be so frightened of doing any public speaking. How would I handle a kid or a person like that? The first thing I'm going to do is teach them a world-class magic trick. And you're going to learn how to do it really well. You're going to do it in front of friends and family. You're going to do it in front of your professor. Eventually, you're going to do it in front of your class. So baby steps. And I'm going to make you look phenomenal. And you're going to get the feedback of endorphins of, wow, this is what it feels like. That would be an example of something that I would do right now. I mean, everyone's going to learn three or four or five world-class magic tricks they can do anywhere. You know, so we're uh, help. Oh, go oh, go ahead, Ryan, please. Oh, yeah. oh, yeah. I, I'm just, you know, the other part of our our title for today is is making a difference in the world. And when you're working with these young minds, uh, and correct me if I'm wrong, but that age group being was it 14 to 27? 14 to 27 seems to be the sweet okay. spot. Gotcha. So, so you're working with these young minds, you know, in that age range, the idea of making a difference in the world can seem daunting. It can seem big. Oh, I'll get to it kind of thing. What do you have to say to that? You know, where, where do your conversations, your teachings, your lessons and the way you, you mold these minds and work with them address this idea of, of maybe encouraging them, let's say, to think about making that difference. In the it's world. a That'll great like comment, Ryan. Great question. The, the thought process is, is whoever they meet, they are automatically thinking of how can they help the other person? It's about them. It's about being more interested than interesting. Absolutely. Number one is a core principle of what can you do to help that person? Now they're saying, well, I'm a student. What do I have? Hey, you have a lot of collateral you don't even believe in. You can help them with math. You can do this. You can, you, you, we tell them to build a golden Rolodex, which is a lot of different people you're going to be running into. You might know a doctor. You might know someone who can help with a paper. So the fact of the matter is when I'm introduced to anyone, I'm thinking to myself, you know, where is the, well, obviously, where's the person suffering? Where's the pain points? How can I help them? And in many cases, I can't help them. I know someone else that can help them. I'm not going to help some a kid write an essay. I'm not good at that. I'm not going to help someone with high technology issues. We hire out for all the AI and all the smart technology people out there. So the first thing is, it's not about you. It's about them. Always about them. And that's what Bob's really good at. Bob is really good about zeroing in on them and finding out how he can help not only the, 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 the family, but also the greater picture of who they're connected with because it's, it's not just the family there's so many moving parts to a family so how can you help them that's the ad, that's the idea well barry wow there is so much there uh, i'm so much there um i think we could speak for hours on this i'm fascinated by so much of what you do and, and what you have to say on, on this call and our relationship what i learned from you 
Um, how, by the way, how long do you generally work with, uh, you get a student, 14, 15, 20? Yeah, we sign a, a one-year contract and they sign an engagement contract, Bob. And the parents are happily wanting to write a check, but I will want to interview the, the, the young mind to see if they're committed. And if they're 80 or 90% committed, I don't want them. I've given checks back. You're not ready for me. I need 100% buy-in. If you're committed, I'm, I don't need to do this. This is what I love to do. So uh, one year, we, we have a minimum of two Zoom calls a month that I'm connecting with them daily via text or whatever. Like, for instance, I know one of my young minds has a big test today in accounting. I'll text them, tell me how it goes, good luck on it. You know, stuff like that. So I'm very connected. And I think that's a key that I'm in their corner. I'm not judging them. I'm pushing them. Uh, how should I say it? I'm gently pushing them. Because my, my job really is to embrace discomfort. They're not going to grow unless they get uncomfortable. Right, Ryan? They're not going to grow. No, of course, of course, you got to be tested in different ways, shapes and forms, for sure. Well, Barry, you know, these are it's a really interesting thing that you do. And I feel like it's a it's a quite the niche to to help out folks that are in this in this world. And as I mentioned earlier, Bob and I, we have these conversations surrounding that next generation, right? I, I mean, there's a staggering statistic in the amount of wealth that's going to be transferred to the next generation in the here in the next five to 10 years. And when we look at that next generation, Let's face it, sometimes you run into individuals in that next generation that don't have that drive. They don't have the same passions or desires that the matriarch or patriarch did maybe the first generation who grew the wealth in the first place. For folks like that, Barry, I know you just said that you, you need 100% buy-in, but do you have any thoughts or feedback for those, those young minds, the ones that are struggling to find their place in the world maybe, or they're, and they're not necessarily gelling with what mom or dad did, but they're, they're not lost, but they're on a different path, shall we say? What are, what are your thoughts to that? Yeah, we, I put them through an exercise. Oftentimes they don't know what they wanna do. And so they're, they're just lost. I say, here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna do a campaign for 90 days. You're gonna talk to a hundred different people about what do they do? What's their job? And just, understand what the different roles are because many people just are just they have no clue they're going to school they're doing well in school but they just don't have any fire in the belly so i will get them on a campaign to talk to many different people document it we'll discuss it and then as we're get as we're doing more and more of that kids are coming back and they're saying you know I want to get involved in X or I want to get involved in, and then I'll start lining up people they can talk to. And before you know, it, we're taking this and we're jailing it down to this. And then say, okay, we need to get an internship for you at the summer of 24. We need to do this. We need to do that. You need to talk to this person. You need to get a job. You need to start saving some money. So, so it's that kind of dialogue and it's baby steps. So I would start with a campaign to get them talking to a lot of different business owners or people in, in whatever they do. And let's just narrow it down. You don't want to be a doctor. Okay. You don't want to be a CPA. Okay. What do you want to do? Do you want to be an entrepreneur? Do you want to be in finance? Do you want to be an artist? Do you want to be a, um, whatever? So there's just, that's, and that's very common, Ryan. Sure. So you no, give I'm them a good. campaign, you give them something to focus on that they, they, they can feel like they're making progress in and that I'm involved. And then we're measuring it again. They have to write the name down on a digital mm -hmm. dashboard that I construct for them. And your goal is 100 people in 90 days. Oh, you're at 35. We need, come on, you got to do 10 more names this week. Make it a game. Make it fun. This is, doesn't have to be, oh my God, horrible. Make it fun. Sure, sure. And well, hey, Bob, I'd throw you that same question. You know, I, I, we've talked about it in prior episodes, but it seems like a good time to get your your feedback on the way you approach those kinds of situations when you're talking with families. How do you navigate those those concerns? What is, I mean, primarily when you're talking wealth management conversations with these families to to maybe get that younger generation's buy in so that they can understand the values, the importance of the wealth and so on. Well, you know, you know, not only do I have this issue with my clients, but I have this issue in my own family and, and the work that I do. I mean, we, we are a family business. Uh, my son, Eric, is my partner. We're working together. Eric's uh, 37 years old as we record this podcast. And David, who's 27, is, is considering uh, his, his next moves, his next steps. So we, we have these conversations within my own family as well. 
And in addition, in addition to that, it is, um, I think one of the hardest things for, uh, for raising children in general, although there are, you know, there's daunting in so many ways, but one of the things that I had to learn early with my four children is that they don't want to be mini Bobs. They don't want to do what I want to do, for example. And I could take something as simple as, as you know, my, my great love for tennis, Barry's a great tennis player. And, uh, you know, I, I, I had this hallucination as a young, as a young, young dad is, oh yeah, my kids are all going to be on, on, uh, you know, solid tennis players. They're going to, they're going to make it the love, the love of their life. And, and they're all going to want to play tennis and they're all going to want to play squash. And they're all going to want to be interested in what I'm interested in. Well, of course that, that, um, hallucination went away relatively quickly. And I had to learn, uh, four children, same environment, same parents, they all have different predilections, interests, desires, the kinds of things that Barry brings out as he, as he works with these young adults and these young minds. And I think the, the first thing is just to take a breath and just reflect and just understand that your children are not clones of, what, of you and what you want to do. And they may not necessarily want to take over that business. As, you know, as we work with so many companies and their succession plans, you know, oftentimes they have this dream that their kids are going to take over the business, which is not realistic because the kids really don't want to take over the business. Then, you know, there are, of course, employees and ESOP possibilities. There are outside buyers. There are other things that can happen. Um, but I just want to go back to Barry and just applaud the work that he's doing because he's doing the heavy lifting and the motivational and aspirational and inspirational things with these young minds that, frankly, are helping them develop and, and understand what their desires are. I mean, I don't know about everybody else listening to this, but I, I don't know how many people wake up, uh, you know, go through school, go through high school, get their college degree or not, and know exactly what they want to do with life and how they want to make that difference in the world and uh, create their amazing life as significant. So it's a process. And um, I just, I just think it takes a, what Barry referenced earlier. I think it takes a good EQ to really understand that it's about giving. It's about being interested and not interesting. It's about giving, not taking, and it's understanding the human element, and that it's so about so much more than money. And it's you know, and it's really about um, caring enough and giving enough to understand what those kids want to do. You know, and on that note, Bob, one thing we do a lot of is we believe you're the aggregate of the five people you most associate with. So think about these young minds with the right crew or the wrong crew. They're going to ascend a lot quicker if they're with the right crew, a right group of friends. And the same thing with golfers, tennis players, financial advisors. If you're with the right crew, you're going to ascend a lot quicker. So I take a really hard look at who are their friends? Who are they spending time with? And it, you can't fix that right immediately, but it's something something that will tells me a lot and how we need to change that or improve that. So just think of any anyone that you know who is toxic, negative, or swims in pools of pessimism. You don't want to be around those folks. They're not going to help you. Sure. Period. Sure. Yeah, you know, Barry, I I, I do something. I do something. Um, fairly often, actually, we, I call it thinking time. And what I do is I sit down at a, in a quiet place for a couple of hours, away from all distractions in, a, in, a, in an environment that I'm comfortable in. And I just write out questions uh, that I, and then I answer with pen and paper in front of me. And I just write and I write and I write and I write. And I did it just this week. And I was going back and reflecting on, and one of the questions I asked myself, what have been the greatest influences in my life? And I kind of took it by era by era, you know, my, my elementary school days, my high school days, my college days, my early career days. And as I went through that, I saw a pattern that really actually bugged me a little bit, is which I just saw a pattern that particularly in my Wall Street days, that I was associated with so many individuals that were among those five people that influenced me the most. And uh, to say it nicely, they had dorsal fins coming up out of the back of their pinstripes. They felt that the, the only way to, to win was that somebody else would lose. And the only measure of, of a man is how much money he was sitting on in, this, in a pile of cash. 
And it's, uh, it was um, humbling. It was humbling as I thought about that. Now, I'm, my life's completely different now. I, my, my five, my associations are with really giving, nurturing people who have perspective and balance in their lives. But as I look back, I said, boy, would my path have been easier. Boy, I wish I'd, you know, we were of different generations, Barry, and I would have known you uh, all those decades ago. But we were the, we're the same age, so what the heck <laughs> was going to happen? Um, but boy, what a difference that would have made in my, in my life. And so I just am so thrilled uh, by the work that you're doing. It's uh, the, the only negative is that you're just one man. I wish, you know, you, you can't do enough. You can't see enough people. You can't influence enough. So um. We're enjoying the journey. Well, Barry, if, you know, as we kind of bring our conversation to a head for, for folks out there, you know, in our audience that are, are hearing the great work that you, you guys are doing over at MAG7 and are motivated by it in any way, shape or form. Maybe let's say they want to do a little research on you or maybe even just see if they could reach out and open up a dialogue. What would be the best way somebody can find you sure. Barry, um, uh, and, and talk to you? It would be my webpage. It's MAG7 Consultants dot com mag seven consultants.com and be happy to have a dialogue with anyone and see if i can possibly give them some feedback and help and i'll be very brutal i mean a lot of the times the parents really want this but the kid's not committed so um you it, it's virtually impossible to help someone if they don't you know if they're not committed to it and in, in anything right Right. Well, so. appreciate that. And then of course, Bob, you know, Hey, look, a lot of the conversation surrounding this life of significance and making that difference in the world always ties back into finances. So for, as you know, as we typically do, Bob, for anybody out there that is interested in reaching out to you and your team to talk about a financial challenge or any, any element of their financial world, how can they get in touch with you guys? Yeah. Th thanks for that question, Ryan. Be before I answer that, I just want to say one thing about Barry and reaching out to him. Uh, Barry sends a daily email. Uh, Barry, I believe you called the Barry briefly, if I'm not mistaken. And I've been on that list for a little while now. And it's just a quick read. And it's some of the concepts and the ideas that Barry has that he's teaching these young minds. And I got to tell you, it helps the mind of, of my mind too. And I, I, it's my, it's my favorite thing to open every morning and see what uh, Barry is sending with words of wisdom. So uh, as you reach out to Barry, uh, you know, please sign up, please sign up for that text. It's a simple text. It takes you 20 seconds to read, but it's really thought provoking and, and wonderful. And in terms of reaching me, uh, also same answer, the website's the best way, oswegoprivatewealth.com. And uh, you can reach out to me, you can learn a little bit more about our firm, what we do, how we do it, who we serve. And, um, and you can even schedule a meeting, a telephone meeting with me to uh, get acquainted as, as get the ball rolling. Fantastic. Well, look, guys, I know you both are busy folks. You've got clients to serve uh, and, and hey, an accounting test that you need to hear about Barry later today. So uh, we'll let you guys get back to serving your clients, doing what you do best, but uh, appreciate the conversation. And Barry uh, would love to have you back on down the road and, and check in, see how things are going. Really enjoyed it, Ryan, your class act and Bob, what a world-class business you're building. Love it. So keep up the great job you're doing. All righty, guys. Well, hey, look, we're going to go ahead and take one final moment, as we always do, and thank you, and that's our audience out there, for stopping by and spending some time with us on the show here today. As always, if you did take something away from today's discussion around this life of significance and making a difference in the world, you benefited from it in any way, shape, or form, well, make sure you hit that subscribe button then on whichever platform you checked us out on today. That way you never miss out on a future episode where Bob and I dive into these wealth management discussions, these life discussions, as today's episode was surrounding, and we're always joined by a great guest. So we'd hate to have you miss out on any of those future conversations. But for Bob, for Barry, I'm Ryan. We're going to go ahead and say so long, but we appreciate you stopping by and being with us on Lessons by the Lake.